Hi, this is Giles Obert, and welcome to my Talking Guitar Podcast with blues legend John Lee Hooker. I'm especially excited about this one because Mr. Hooker is a musician who first inspired my love for the blues. This happened in 1966 during my first month at the Jesuit All Boys High School in Detroit. The school arranged for John to put on a concert on a Friday night, and he showed up with no band, just his guitar and amp. A few months earlier, John had recorded his classic Live at Cafe Ogogo album with Muddy Waters and his band. Seeing John perform solo renditions of the songs on that album was mesmerizing. I remember he kept time with his feet, played his electric guitar with medium volume, and kept his eyes closed during most of the concert. In fact, he never took off his jacket or hat. This event inaugurated my love for the blues, and within weeks, I had begun buying blues records. Like John Lee Hooker, I moved from Detroit to San Francisco Bay Area in the 1970s. Our shared Motor City backgrounds put John at ease, and we ended up doing many interviews together. These included John's standalone guitar player cover story, and another one pairing him with B.B. King. You can hear this one as a Talking Guitar podcast. We also did a cover featuring Buddy Guy and John together, and I did another one with John for Blues Review Magazine. My favorite conversations with him, though, were the ones we did for Living Blues Magazine. Because John's voice tended to give out during longer conversations, his booking agent, Mike Kappas, asked if we could do the interview over two different days. Naturally, I agreed. The one you're about to hear took place in John's comfortable ranch style home in Redwood City, California on December 13th, 1996. After I arrived, one of John's children ushered me into his bedroom. I found John there sprawled across his bed wearing a three-piece silk suit. As you'll hear, John's phone rang a few times as we spoke. My producer Nick Hunt and I decided to leave in these interruptions since the call sparked a change in the direction of our conversation. So here, without further ado, is the first part of our Living Blues cover story interview. When you were a, when you were a kid growing up in Mississippi, who was the person you were closest to? I wasn't a musician. No, as a person. Like your mom or your sister? My mother and father. Yeah? Well, yeah. What kind of woman was your mom? A wonderful woman. Well, she was a church woman. Made me go to church. But my mother and father. He separated, divorced, or whatever. She got remarried to a guy who was real old. Did I ever tell you about him? Yeah. How old were you when that happened? Just a kid. Uh huh. Was that hard on you? Hard when your mom and dad split up? No, I finally come to live with, with, with her. And then, but my, my dad was a minister. I couldn't play guitar in the town. Yeah. And my stepfather was a musician, a little more. I think I told you that many times, I'm not sure. And he taught me what I know. I, the thing that I'm playing now, that's what he taught me. His style, his style what I'm playing now. Yeah. Did you like Will Moore when you first started to live with him? Yeah, he, he was a good man. I liked him very much. What, what's that? I liked him very much. Did he work a day job? Yeah. No, you had a farm. You know? Yeah. Did you have brothers and sisters? Oh, yeah. You're all going on. You know? They're all passed away? When yeah. you were living with Will and your mom together, were there a bunch of kids in the house? No. Just me. Just you? Mm -hmm. 
Were you the baby in the family? No. You two. Jesse? Yeah. What was your mom's name? Minnie Ramden. Mary Ramden? No, Minnie Ramden. Ah. Did your mom ever hear any of your records? No. They didn't hear. They didn't live that long? No, but I left when I was young, come to come Detroit. I think I told you. Yeah. I left them out of the bug. 14 or 15. Um, I never see them anymore. You never saw them again? I went to Memphis, they come and got me, but I didn't see them on maybe a week and left again. Uh huh. So you weren't that close to them? What? You weren't that close later on, and when you got older, you weren't that close to, to Will and your mom? No, I loved them, but I wasn't close to them. I wasn't down to them. Yeah. Did your mom pass away before you made records? Yeah. Is anyone still alive today who you were friends with when you were a kid? Someone you're still in touch with? I don't think so. No. Bread not. What kind uh, of church was your dad a minister at? An AME? Baptist? Yeah. Did you go to the ceremonies when he was preaching? Oh, yeah. Was he good? Oh, yeah. Did, oh, you, yeah. did you like the music back then? Oh, yeah. I loved it. I, used to live, I, I didn't see these people, but I loved it. Charlie Patton, Blind Lemon, Blind Blake, Leroy Cobb. I never see them, but I loved the music, you know? Did, did your mom and, did, and stepdad have a record player? Yeah. So did you have 78s by Blind Lemon in the, in the house? Yeah, they had it, okay. Uh-huh. Did you ever go to... Excuse me one minute. Sure. Hello. No, what you do, you know? Well, why you call on the phone, I'm getting out of you, you, you know that number? Yeah. Uh. And um, do you remember the first time you saw somebody with an electric guitar? Mm-hmm. Keep on walking. You went to see him in a nightclub? It's my team level where I am. He's my idol. Yeah. Yeah, he, 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 he gave me my play electric guitar. What stood out about him that made him your idol? What did you like about his playing? He was so good. A different style, an electric guitar too. And he was nice. He loved me, but take me with him everywhere we go, man. Mm -hmm. Call me the kid. <laughs> <laughs> the kid? Mm -hmm. Where was this in Detroit or Chicago? Detroit. I, I, I never lived in Chicago. Uh huh. Now, once you got up to Detroit and you started to record, I, I realized that in the first year, you even re-recorded about 80 different songs. Oh, yeah. The first night, between 1948 and 49, according to some of the record books, you got about 80 or 90 mm -hmm. songs that you made for different labels like... Uh, what were them in a different label? <laughs> well, Modern, and they came out on Modern and Crown and King and Regent. Modern and Crown were the same label. Were they? What was their studio like? No, nice. They didn't, they didn't have all the stuff they got now. Uh huh. It was good. United Sound Studio down in Detroit. Did, was that on Gratiot? No, no, it was on the Boulevard. Jefferson? No. Hmm. West Grand Boulevard. West Grand Boulevard. Would, when you when you were making rest records like Boogie Chillin' by yourself, you know, before you started working with Eddie Kirkland. Would you be in a, in a small room? Hello? Yeah. Okay. 
Hi, Siobhan. Oh, good night, Abdul. How you doing? Yes, I am. Well, where you at? Yeah, is she home? Uh, she's supposed to take you shopping. She, she, she got some money for you. Yeah? Well, when you get a chance, stop by the seat on that. You got no, you got no car. Oh yeah. What? How you getting here? How you getting here? What car? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You got no license. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. All right. That's my daughter. Mm. Nice to hear from him, man. Yeah, always. Yeah. I sure love my daughter, man. More than anybody on this world. Well, you know, that's yours. You know, sometimes they ain't always right, but you still love them. They do not do the thing that you don't appreciate, but you love them. Did your kids grow up in your... Yeah. Were you a strict dad? No. Well, you know, I didn't, I didn't grow up a lot of okay, though. But I did live. Calling my rule, my rule was the hard rule. Yeah. Do the right thing, go out and be home and a decent hour, and they did that. And oh, baby, they did that. You know, kids when they're young, they do something that you don't approve of. Them and yeah. You talk to them, you know. Yeah. Tell them what you, you, know, you don't like or what you do like. Hoping that they don't do that anymore. So, you know. Did you raise your ch children to believe in like God and Jesus? Oh yeah. Well, I do. Yeah. What's your witness? You're a Jehovah's Witness. Have you been that all your life, or? No. I'm a Baptist. You were raised a Baptist. Yeah, my my, my family was. Yeah. What led you to become a Jehovah's? I didn't know that. I don't know much about him, actually. Well, it was a belief, you know, Jehovah. You know, it's God is Jehovah. Mm -hmm. God, Jehovah. And then I would come to believe, believe in that, but you, 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 you have to be holy and sanctified, but you do the right thing in life and love people and believe in him. Just, that's all you do so. Do you think there's such a thing as heaven? I believe mean, paradise. That's your life. It's here on earth? Yeah. He will clean the, the wicked and save the righteous who... <coughs> you, you don't believe in God, do you? Oh, I do. <coughs> you do? Oh, yeah. Sure I do. I was raised Catholic. I believe in Jesus, God, the whole thing. Yeah, well. Wow. Especially believing you got to treat people right. Yeah, right. So. He will never destroy the earth. He destroy the people that the evil on this earth. He destroy the evil. Mm -hmm. But he don't destroy the thing that he invented. He invented this, this earth. When we don't know he's been here forever. Yeah. This earth will never be destroyed. He's not going to destroy this earth. He'll destroy the people that own it. Yeah. The evil, the dream, he will clean this up. The righteous will survive who believe in him. That's what I believe in. Yeah. I could be wrong. Do you think that once you've passed away that, that your spirit will know other spirits? That I don't know. Uh, Have you ever felt like someone who passed away visited you somehow? Or? Oh, yeah, my mother. Yeah. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, I have seen her in my dream, in my sleep. I have seen her. The vision walked into my room. For the spirit. Was your mom affectionate with you when you were a kid? Very. That must have made you feel pretty good. Oh, yeah. You were close. She affected with all of us. What did she call you? What was her nickname for you? Yeah, the Johnny. Johnny? 
Were you a troublemaker when you were a teenager? No. A rebel? I was only was a kind of a kind of a Christian, but he did me read at this Sunday school. I never been a barber because I've never been barber since I grew up. You may not believe this, but I never had a fight. Okay. One time I was a kid, you know. Yeah. I never been in trouble, I never had a fight. But I'm not being Never. How about after you became a performer? No, uh, no, I never, 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 never had a fight since I've been drunk. Really? That's mm. a pretty damn good record. I don't believe in fighting. I'm on my level. I'm not a fighter. If I find anybody running by ain't right, I just cut them loose, you know? Yeah. I try to stay away from trouble, you know? People have tried to get me in trouble, but it didn't happen. So I know I've been sanctified and holy, but I've been a good person. Yeah. Very good person. I hope a lot of people, a lot of people. Being able to express yourself with blues songs must have really meant a lot to you through your life, you know? It's really a gift to be able to do that. What? If you can sit down and pick up the guitar and play a blues, you have a, it's, it's easier to let go of stress. And put, Very easy, that's what I do. And put your mind at ease in a way you can't do it. Yeah, you, you pick up a guitar and sing. It heals you. There's a song called The Healer. Mm -hmm. Lose the Healer. Yeah. You play the song, say the song. It heals your mind and take the frustration out you. Just keep on doing that. It takes away the all this evil and the stress. But you know that you can't. You can't change nothing once it doesn't happen, but you, you can try to forget it and, and live with it and not be in world you through you your music and stuff like that. The name of my album called Don't Look Back, my new one. Yeah. Don't look back to a thing that happened to you, the past, the bad, the ugly. Leave it behind, you can't change that. You think it's only good thing you did. You hope that you keep on doing good things in life. Yeah. Loving people. I mean, one race is a human race. God made us all. We are all different colors and different languages. But we all God children. He made me to treat us as one. Start talking. Hi. Right. Yeah, she did. I forgot about she did call me. Yeah, he called. I forgot about she called. Hey. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. You coming by later? Oh, what made made was there? They died. Yeah. What made in the house in the car farm? What made it there in the house car farm? Okay. Mm -hmm. 
what the power was in New Bray? Yeah. What was the power of the house? Well, I see you tell me about you. You coming out later on today? I see. I'm getting. I'm getting the interview. I could, could, could come out later on today. Yeah, but I'm, I wait for you. I'll be home all day. Just stop by about three or four o'clock. All right. Bye. Right. You sure know a lot of women. Oh yeah. You don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you believe in the power of prayer? Yes. I may be wrong for breathing, but I believe it. I believe in prayer. I was taught to believe in prayer. But well, where you go to church for it, you pray in the church. Mm -hmm. You you ever been to church? Yeah, a lot. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Prayer, I believe in prayer. Uh, It's hard, it's hard to say. Yeah. I believe in it, but it's hard to say why. And God, I believe it's a God. Maybe he hear you. I don't know. I hope he do. Why do you think God gave you such a great gift from creating? Oh, Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Somehow do. Uh, yeah. He, yeah, he was for who? Who was that for? Uh, the Lakeisha? The Keisha Clark. I wrote a check for 60. Oh, 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 Tish. Oh, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. All right. Thank you. <laughs> okay, have a good day. And have a happy holiday. Thank you. Bye. Uh -huh. Now you, what were you saying? What's that? What were you saying? Uh, we talked about prayer, and then I was asking if you if you thought um, God gave you this special talent for blues. Yeah, he did for, for a reason. Uh, I believe he did. Nobody can tell me different. I, uh, I don't read and write that good. Yeah. And God, give it. Come on in. How long? How long? How long are you gonna be? About another ten minutes. Okay. Mm. If you God give you the talent, God give you everything you got. Your brain, your talent, your whatever. I don't think it be evil though. I think it take. I think the devil put evil in you. God put the good things in you. The, the prayer and things, how to give the talent, the, just the talent I, I got. To, who, what I got, what's what your name again? What your name? Jazz. Jazz. Well, what I got, Jazz, is in, it's not in a book. Blue is not in a book. And here and here. Your heart and your head? Yeah. You, in a book, it's fictitious. You, something you've written in the book. Yeah. Or oh, you can write the lyrics down as you think of them. But it comes from here to here. If you put it in the book, we won't forget it. Yeah. But I can go into the studio and do something right on the spot. The gift and the talent that I've got, the gift that God gave me, and here and here. Not your bone gift from God. So let's see. He said, How you do it? I said, I can't tell you how to do it. You got to have a talent and a gift to do this. Some people can't they do it, but they got to get it out of a book. Study it in a day and read this song, and then it takes the feeling away. Mm -hmm. And when you come here, you got the feeling. Sometimes when I get so deep into it, jazz, teardrop come into my eyes. I get so so so, so commotion from the blue, the, the good feeling. Make me so sad. Just, 
I feel a teardrop. Are there other times that makes you feel real happy? All the time, yeah. Yeah. Real happy. Sometimes I'm so happy that that's what called the tears, feeling so good. Yeah. They're not tears, they're not hurting tears. <laughs> they're happy tears. Why do you think so many women have been attracted to blues music ever since people have been playing it? Well, women that, that tell the story about women and men, that's what music is all about. It's about being human and love and hate. It's, it's, you hear this blues, it's, it's talk about my woman has loved me, I love you, baby. Honey, don't go, come on back. This, 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 you're talking about a woman, you're talking about a man. They, they feel that, they, they hear that different thing. Uh, it, it was song I write, it's got something about a human being. Mm -hmm. You can't write a song that you write about a human being, especially if a man write about a woman. Yeah. I don't write about no man. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a man. <laughs> no. I got right about one with the called Dimples, you know? Oh, yeah. She got, got Dimples. Yeah. <laughs> dimples. Yeah. Well, women like that. She's saying good things about her. She got Dimples on the jaw. I like the way she walks. She wake up when she walks. You know, they like stuff like that. Yeah. She got a little song called I, I Hate You, You No Good. You know, <laughs> they went like that. Yeah. So you got to, to, to write good things about them. They, they love it. And, among all the musicians you've worked with, who would you consider to be your closest friend? Well, it's pretty hard. Musicians that I work with were the closest. He's not real famous, and I'm not a, he, he tried to be Eddie Bunn. He go to Eddie. You bet. Started playing with you in Detroit in '57. Great, yeah. great yeah. guy. Yeah. yeah. Did yeah. he first play harmonica for you before he played? Yeah, yeah, he played all. He can play harmonica. Yeah, he is so good. What did you like about Eddie? Well, he was so close, good friends, and he he, he he took a lot of better to listen to me about to get a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. When I first met him, he wasn't playing guitar as good as he was now. He wasn't playing guitar. He not too much song, but he played a different song, but with the blues. Yeah. And I like about him because he was such a nice person. Me and him were just like brothers. Yeah. Still is. I've never seen him, but once in a while I talked to him. He was real close to me. And the way he came to Detroit, I was just, just started that and two months started out, you know. And Eddie Kirkman, you know, Eddie Kirkman? Yeah, man. You, the records you made with him kick ass. He kicked butt, man. They kick ass. They're great. That's some of the yeah. best blues music ever. Yeah, stuff I made with him was kick butt, kick butt. Yeah, you guys you know just I mean? boogied like crazy. Yeah, I got one on the night. Me and I call him. You ain't no big thing, baby. This one's on that new record. Whose idea was it to team the two of you guys up on record? When you first started cutting with a second guitar player, that must have been different. Uh, Brian Bestman. Brian Bestman? You heard of him? Wasn't he an executive at um, Modern or somewhere? Yeah, he no connection with much. I don't want that. I just don't want label, but he knows them. He had a big distributor come to distribute the records all over, over the world. And then he Modern and all the same about him. That's how he knows them. And then the, uh, I started with him. My first, my first record was with, 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 with him on Sensation Label. With Eddie Kirkland? Yeah. Yeah. And then he, Boy, you chillin', we got so big, he couldn't handle it. Bunny couldn't, he could switch it over to Marlon. Now, uh, uh, when you first hooked up with Eddie Kirkland, which of the two of you was the better guitar player? I never would say I'm better than anybody, you know? That's the word I would use. I'm better than you, and you better than me. You just... The different styles. Different styles, you just play. It's kind of like Muddy and Jimmy Wa Jimmy Rogers, you know? You guys are just working yeah, in mm -hmm. and out. Yeah, yeah. I never said I'm better than Eddie, never say he's better than me, but this. Yeah, I, I said that wrong. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, didn't. Okay. But, uh, I just got a, got a bigger break than he got. He, he, he never did get the break. He, should, he still ain't got it. 
Muddy Waters one time said that you can never be the best musician. You can only be a good one. Right, that's true. You believe that? Right. You can never be the best one. You can be a good one, but you can never be the best one. Because don't tell me that I'm always good, repeating. You can be a good one, but you can never be the best one. What, what would you who say? is the best one? I don't know. I think it could change from night to night. It can. I don't like a lot of fast picking. Mm -hmm. Loud, loud music. I don't, I don't like. <laughs> that, that ain't music. That, it's a lot of fast notes, you know? Showing off. That's all it is, showing off. A lot of fast notes. <laughs> and loud, too, you know? I, I'm, not, I'm not. If I'm down, I get up and go. I said, let's go. Take me to my car. Well, he didn't even listen to a lot of loud music. He ain't got no feeling, you know? Yeah. They fast, don't be wrong, they fast. That's all he's got. I like it slow, funky. Even, even when I play my, I play, play, I play the boogie, I play with a funky beat. Yeah. But not. That's what I bet. Yeah. It's fast coming to the blood. Do you feel closer to the electric guitar and the acoustic? No, I do, but do you why I love acoustic? I don't know I used to play it. I love it. I still do. But now I remember people say electric guitar, but you, you got to because the club you play in, it is it is the more coffee house. Everybody drinking, they loud. Yeah. You got to have or let the guitar to, to be heard. But playing acoustic guitar, you, you people can they can they can even talk. To do they can't hear you. Yeah. So you can hear nothing. But in, in the old days, you know coffee houses, people are sitting there. Yeah, I, I saw you in one thirty years ago in Detroit. Yeah. You sit there and just play the acoustic guitar and just people enjoy you know, when you're playing, they don't even Nothing that sit there and you know, even wait, no, wait, no, even serve. Yeah, and you get through. You too plain, then they serve or the back, and then you be dead quiet. Uh huh, dead quiet. You don't want to hear. Now, people, not people don't want to hear. They want to be dancing and jumping. And... Hey, my whore. <laughs> <laughs> so you got there. I still don't play too loud. I play loud enough to run my head, but it's fast playing. <laughs> I had a guy with me. He was so loud, I had to let him go. I couldn't get him to slow down, but he was good too. Mm. Uh, give me a glass of water. Or, or to, okay. Warm that, that, that maybe a warm temperature. You gotta go get the kids. Yeah, I'll bring you some water. Can you do? Uh -huh. Do you need to wrap this up, John? I don't want to wear you down. Well, I'm about another five minutes. Okay. What's what do you think the best reason for someone becoming a blues performer is? You know, some guys might think I want to do it to make money. I want to do it to be famous. What do you think the reason is someone should go into that? Someone do it for the money. Someone do it to be famous. You gotta pick the kids up. You coming back? Yeah. Huh? They, what they call Vicky said, his, his, or she said, she'll they'll go pick up my car. They go pick it up? Yeah. You leave up the keys with her? The keys. Okay, baby. Be, right. be careful. I'll be back. Hello. Hello. No, no, no. You're talking about the best reason for getting into playing music. The best reason for getting into playing music? Yeah. Some get into it for be serious, some get into it want to be a, a star and to be heard. What do you say? Um, the super don't have gas in it. It don't. You ain't got no money? No, I don't. Hold on just one minute, please. I'm sorry. Oh, don't be sorry. You ain't got no money. You ain't got no gas. You ain't no... I don't have to find my wallet. Yeah, yeah. One moment, please. I can take care of that. 
Do you plan to ship while I'm stationed? Yeah, it's been like four times. Okay, I'll be back later on. Oh, yeah, some good. Now, I'm in it for, not for the money, but you always have money. I'm in it because I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. I'm not in it for, for money because I'm not like saying this because all oh, the deals I make a lot of money. I'm not waiting for money. You're not retired, baby. I never retire from music. Cause it's in your blood, you know. Yeah. Sometimes I'm I'm not able to play. Sometimes I'm sick. I can't, but it's always here. It's always in your heart. Always there. Is there ever a time you had a hard time writing songs? Yeah. I don't know. Right one way I don't like it. You try to change it and do it another way, and then you don't like that. You try to do it another way. You just to get it like you want. Did your best, the songs that became the most popular, were those ones that just kind of wrote themselves fast? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Back boom, boom, boogie chill, it's on part one. Were you playing boogie chill? I'm sorry. Dimple, that was a big hit on them, bro. Did, were you playing boogie chill before you made the recording of it? Yeah. Play Ryan Club, man. Got the end of one more thing I wanted to ask you about is when you were making records back then, were you in like a, a medium or small sized room and would they put a mic on just you or you and your amp? How did you get that? No, when I was making records back then. I was in a studio right there on West Bend Boulevard at the, the, the uh, Joe's studio, big studio, but they, they put a plow board on your feet. Like you know what a board is? Plywood? Yeah, on your feet, but they just tap it. They put a plywood board underneath your feet? Yeah. And you have sound rooms. Now, the put, room put, you put, were put, in. Put, put, put into a booth. Was it a small room you were recutting in? Or a big room? Sometimes, yeah. And, uh, sometimes big, sometimes small. Would you have your amp set up at your feet or behind you? or Behind me. Sometimes they put me on. But we in a big studio, but they put a booth around me. You know? Oh, they build like baffle around you? Yeah, keep the sound. Keep the sound in. Sometimes, then, not all the time, but most of the time. Were you cutting with one mic at first? Yeah. One mic. It didn't have all that stuff in my head. Uh-huh. Were you surprised? But, but the record was good quality, though. They're great. Were you surprised when you started hearing yourself on playbacks? Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good, yeah. That's so good. You did? What, what record do you think changed your life the most? Boogie Chillow. That was a big hit. Everywhere you went, you get it. That was number one troll to country. Right back in the mood, that was number one. Mm -hmm. I didn't go back then. Did this success ever cause you trouble? In what way? Like the people uh, who knew you before. I didn't get jealous of them, but uh, yeah, I'm big trouble. I know that some, I know some people hate to see you doing good. Isn't that something? Hate <laughs> 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 you doing good. I never understand that. I never understand that. I was making money and doing good. You could quit a job and play music, buying cars. They did. They, they jealous. They got jealous. You know. I never could understand that. Yeah. Only you will. Yeah. You don't want to see it down. <laughs> you have pity on you. What can, What do you think when people want you to sound like you did 40 or 50 years ago, like certain guys, like B.B. King's always going to have to play The Thrill Is Gone. You know? I don't know. But it, then them days are gone. You don't ever sound like that. You sound, you sound kind of like that, but you don't sound all together like that. Yeah. But B.B. don't sound, you don't, you don't play that stuff anymore. Oh, I love it. I love them down home when you play like that. Rock Me Baby. Three oh, nine, nine. When you play that, I damn it kills it. That's my favorite he play. Every time you see him while I'm walking in the room, where he is, uh oh, I gotta play that. Which song? Rock Me Baby. <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh, you're my man. <laughs> I gotta play your song, the one I can't get out of here. 
Yeah. All right, and then the thrill is gone. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah, that to me, bro. That gets to me. That's such a beautiful song. Well, you know, people, he, he, he got he, he to gotta follow the people. Now. I understand that. You know, in his book, B.B. keeps talking about how tough it was for him to cross over into the main audience. And it wasn't until Thrill, Thrill is Gone that he really started to open his. Yeah, it was, it was tough. He did it after you, four or five years after you did, it seems like. Yeah. I did it first. Yeah. I'm the first to did it, but I'm close. Now, are you the first one who did it because you were lucky or because Lonnie Johnson was gone? Yeah. Well, Lonnie Johnson did it. He was the first one did it. 59, he went over. Oh, uh, boom, like the boom, like the like lightning. And I was in that to, to the money I went to. I can't motherfucker, how, how you get over there and you know, all that you All those goddamn white kids love you. <laughs> but man, them, 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 them white kids love John Lee Hooker. How the hell you got, how the hell you get that? I don't know, but I just, <laughs> I got on, they all like, they all, they all, they all like me that. Yeah. Me for you back in there. You know what I'm down here? You, you out there with, with the owner, got all them white kids on. Me and you, they all be like, they all be asking about you. I said, they do. Yeah. Yeah. I said, that's about BB. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you tell me that. I don't know. I just did do, 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 do some day and they back what I'm doing. Well, you know, I got to say, you and Miles Davis and Muddy Waters and just a few other people have pulled off a nice long career by doing what you wanted to. Oh, yeah. That's what you Hello? Hi, baby. See you again in the No, I know you I wonder why you had to call your man. I said, why she ain't called her? Pretty good thing. Well, I'm people here interviewing me, you know, for my new record. Did they interview me for my new record? Yeah. Oh, I told you it was a day. Wait, I'm just, I'm just about to. Um, will I be lying? I, I don't want to lie now. Okay. What, what, what time are you going to be home? Will you call me when you get home? <clears throat> you got to work tonight? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, well, have fun. And... You know, the least is don't forget now. You won't forget where you're baby. Now, look, I want you to... You're trying to get about trying to put the three three this thing for your dad. I choose it. Okay, because I'm I'm paying that money, I think. I think so. Yeah. Don't forget now. Okay, baby. Right. Oh, yeah, I'm curious about one thing. You know you got this Pepsi ad on? Yeah. I imagine you, you don't have to say anything, but it seems to me you probably make more money off that ad than Ooh, you probably what? made on all through your fifties. Oh man, five times more. <laughs> <laughs> five times more. That Ten times more. That must be sweet. That one hour. That one commercial. That over a million. Is it better than an album? <laughs> <laughs> man, I, it makes does my heart good to see you on TV doing that ad. Boy. It cracks me up. A hundred thousand up front, every time they show it, I get it on. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm, I'm ready for another. That, that, that's better than the studio. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, better than the studio. It, it, it ain't that long. It's going to hard work. We'll be posting the second half of John Lee Hooker's Living Blues interview early in 2023, so check back then. Before signing off, I want to thank Mike Kappas for his help and encouragement through the years, my podcast producer, Nick Hunt, the staff of UNC's Southern Folklife Collection, and especially my paid subscribers. We couldn't do these podcasts without you. This podcast is copyright 2022 by Jazz Obrecht, all rights reserved. Thanks for listening. <laughs>